Are you looking for holiday card inspiration? I have three different cards for Hanukkah and Christmas using Concord and Ninth's newest interactive holiday collection. Coming up next on Catherine Paper Art. Today's card, I will be using some of the Concord and Ninth's holiday dies that they've just come out with um, in um, September, October, I guess. And uh, anyway, I'm going to be using the tree topper dies for the most part. That's the um, interactive set that they came out with. That's pretty cool. But I'll be possibly using some components from some of the other sets. So uh, anyway, let's get started. Okay, so I have cut out um, all my parts and pieces. At least I think I have. And um, I'm going to, I'm ready to start gluing. So um, the first card I'm going to make is pretty much going to be the same as the um, one of the cards shown on the Concord and Ninth website. Um, so if you're familiar with this tree topper dies set, you'll see um, how the card operates. And basically when you open up the, the card, you see something like this and the the, this hand comes down and places the, the star on top of the tree. So um, that's how that's going to that's how that's going to function. So I'll go ahead and get started um, gluing the pieces down, and I'll be right back. Uh, because I am just basically doing what's shown on the Concord and Ninth website. Um, I'm just going to show the finished product on my video because you can you can readily see what they've done uh, on their website. I will though show how to um, set the arm because the arm is the critical part and so um, this piece here is the functional uh, working part for the arm and I don't know if you can see but it says to it shows where to glue so when you uh, die cut it you you just fold the pieces and then it tells you right where to glue it whoops so these straight pieces really only hold the um, modesty panel so that you don't see the inner workings of the of the arm and the um, or, or the uh, interactive function so to speak and they these get placed up along here one at the top and one at the bottom so that's pretty straightforward and the um, this piece gets placed roughly in the middle. The um, critical aspect of placement there is that you have to make sure your fingers, the fingers of the hand don't rise up over the top of the card. So here's my hand and so here's, here's what this looks like, and it's got three glue locations, and um, it has different score marks here, straight score marks here, and then two that are angled. And you have to fold it in such a manner that uh, you can then glue the arm in, and it only gets glued on this section. Any gluing anywhere else is going to impede movement. So you only glue at the back here. And uh, what you want to do first is locate, locate this hinge to roughly about the middle. Because as I say, once it's closed, you want to make sure your fingertips don't exceed the top of the card. 
and you can see where it's going to be placed because you just you can just hold it in place um, to get an idea like that. That's about halfway through. So I'll go ahead and glue these in place and be right back. So I've put some glue on this glue tab here. And to locate it, I've already decided that, you know, it's about halfway through the card. I'm going to line up this tab with the uh, score line on the fold. Gonna try to line line up that glue line with the the glue tab with the score line. And then I'll hold it there till it sets. And when you open it. You can see how the arm comes down. I don't want to open it all the way yet because I know my glue hasn't fully set. But in the meantime, I will go ahead and, and set these. These are going to be set the same way. They're, they're both going to be, you're just going to take one and set it to the score line. And then you'll, you'll, uh, So I have one one edge of these glued down. Now I'm going to glue the other edge and then I'll just close it upon itself. It's, it's a no-brainer really. So I'll just hold that down for a bit. And I'll be right back. Okay, and now you can see that I have, maybe you can see that they form a box all the way down. Still not quite dry all the way, so I'm not gonna open it up entirely. But uh, like I said, I will glue my components in place and be right back. I've got all of the pieces glued down on the front and um, I'll trim any of the overhang once I've completed the card. And I wanted to show you how to put the tree in. So the arm is glued in and, and these um, support pieces are glued in. You don't wanna put your tree down you don't want to glue the tree in until you've got your hand, your arm placed. Once you get your arm placed, then you're going to put on this modesty panel. And you want to make sure that you align it um, to, the, to the edge of these support pieces. So when you glue this modesty panel on, you just flatten the card and hold it there so it sets. And give it a bit of time to set. So when you open your card, then that's when you'll locate your tree so that the star sits right on top of it. I have such a terrible time with white heat embossing powder and white ink. They're just, I just hate using them. But anyway, this one came out as best as I could get it. So, and I've glued in some other pieces and I'll put our personal message here. And uh, so that's the finished card for this, um, for this tree topper dies card. And like I said, this is really pretty much just what um, Concord and Ninth has on their website is a little bit of a difference but uh, basically it's, it's their card so anyway i hope you like this card and then we'll go into the next card for my next card i'm going to use the 
primarily use the handmade holiday dies set from Concord and Knight. Um, and I'm going to use some components from the tree topper dies also from uh, Concord and Knight. Let me zoom out a bit. And uh, so I am going to be uh, using this in a snowy background. So I've chosen this um, cardstock. In this one, I'm going to use multiple arms ringing Christmas bells. And so I've got a selection of Christmas bells here and a selection of arms, which I will garb in some kind of sweaters. And so um, I'll go ahead and get everything glued down and I'll show you how I've got the mechanisms working for multiple arms and I'll be right back. So for the next card, I made a mock-up of the arms to see where to locate them so they wouldn't bump into each other. And I actually had the component that they were holding as well, but I've taken that out since and put them on the arms here, which are silver bells. So I've gone ahead and completed the front of my card and I've put the uh, hinges in and the bell ringers are going to be something along the lines of this. Now the top one, I kind of messed up, so I have to relocate it. And again, you want to make sure that when you close it, that the pieces don't go above or below the card. Okay, so I've got it worked out. And now I will go ahead and stamp, I'll, I'll go ahead and glue these down permanently and then stamp or heat emboss um, an inside sentiment. Oops. And then uh, I'll do that off screen and be right back. Okay, I've got my arms affixed and I've got my in inside sentiment down. So I'm ready to glue the modesty panel, I know what I call the modesty panel. And um, I'll put some additional snowflakes on and um, then the card will be finished. So I'll finish it off screen and be right back. Okay, this is the finished card. And it came out very nice, I think. And it works beautifully. And Christmas bells are ringing is the interior sentiment. And uh, I think it came out pretty nice after all. It's said and done. And it was easy to put together. Like I said, I made that mock up and that was really helpful. So I decided to add a bonus Hanukkah card since the two holidays usually run around the same time of the year. And um, I'm using just a, I don't know, just a, a, a non-branded Hanukkah set that I bought, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so um, from Amazon, I think. And, um, and I'll be using the uh, Lisa Horton Cloud9 inks to stamp this out in. So... Um, to give it some color, otherwise it would just be black if I used a black ink. So um, I'll start stamping and be right back. Stamping with um, a big ink pad, trying to do these little candles um, is when these little makeup brushes come in really handy because I can do one candle at a time and uh, the, the makeup brushes are spongy and they work the best with these uh, Lisa Horton inks. So just thought I'd share that. Okay, so I finished all my die cutting and my inking and I think the card came out pretty nice. So what I did was for the background of this card, I lightly stamped some Stars of David in silver ink. Um, I don't know if you can see that. I think you can. 
So I did that on the front and I did it on the inside panel here where you would write your personal greeting. And so I heat embossed his sentiment here to say happy Hanukkah and celebrate the miracle. And this is for the eighth night of Hanukkah, I mean, based on the candles that have been lit. So I used some products from the greetery as well. And a no-name company, I don't know who, who they are for the um, menorahs and the, I mean, for the dreidels and the menorah, the Hanukkah here. So anyway, I think this came out pretty nice, actually. And the um, Concord and Knights uh, interactive die set here really lends itself to do many things. You could light a birthday cake, you know, light, light candles on a birthday cake. You could do so many things with this die set. It's pretty wonderful. So um, I'll just bring out all my cards, the three that I made. And... Um, so the first one I did was the the um, Concord and Ninth website card, basically. I mean, I tailored it to, to make it my own, but um, it's basically what they show on their website. And then the second one is a Happy Holidays, Silver Bells, Christmas Bells Are Ringing, with three hands ringing bells. And then my Happy Hanukkah card. So I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please leave us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.